Good morning, my name is Gareth Newham. I'm the head of the Justice and Violence Prevention Program here at the Institute for Security Studies in Pretoria. And today I'm going to be talking about the vexed topic of how to improve the South African police service. Recently, most people who see South Africa or want South Africa to be a prosperous, growing country with an inclusive economy so we can really get on top of our challenges of poverty, unemployment and inequality, we're very relieved to see a change in political leadership with the new president of Cyril Ramaphosa. And indeed, he started off by making some bold moves related to fixing the economy, making sure we had good ministers in charge of the economic de development, in charge of the state-owned enterprises, public enterprises, and so forth. I will argue today that the next most important task for the president, if we are going to help improve the economy, and achieve another very important objective, which is improving public safety in South Africa, is to fix the police. And there is one particular recommendation that I'll be focusing on, and that is the recommendation of the National Development Plan that there needs to be a top management echelon that is only staffed by the most highly skilled and experienced men and women and whose integrity is beyond reproach. So why is this important what, is it, what do we know about it and what can be done? First of all, after almost or about 20 years of working very closely with police officers, men and women across the organization in different parts of the country, in different functions and different levels, from constables to lieutenant generals, we do really have a, lot, a number of highly skilled, highly experienced, dedicated police officers. I've worked with men and women who've got PhDs and master's degrees in policing and related subjects, some even from international in universities, such as the University of Harvard in the United States. The South African Police Service is arguably the most resourced police agency on the continent, with a current budget of 91 billion rand in this financial year, and a staff complement of almost 195,000 people who are deployed from 1,144 police stations covering the entire country, we should really see big improvements or a higher level of public safety than we currently face. So we have moments of this where we see, for example, the Gauteng police between 2009 and 2011 being able to marshal their resources in such a way that they reduced car hijacking by 32% and house robberies by 20%, business robberies by 19% in two years. Again, more recently, we've seen this at the Mount Road cluster in Port Elizabeth, we're working together across various functions. The police have managed to substantially reduce crime and violence associated with gangsterism in that area. So we know that we have the resources and the people to achieve a much higher level of public safety and better policing than we have. So why do we not see this? Why do we have a situation where regularly people go into police stations and are not given the support and service that they deserve? We see this regularly reported in the media. Last year, the police paid out almost 330 million rand ordered to do so by the courts because of misconduct by police officers against members of the public. And that has grown significantly, almost 30% in one year. We see the Statistics South Africa Public uh, uh, National Victims of Survey, Crime Survey showing us that almost consistently since 2011, people's perception of the police doing a good job has declined. So why is this happening? when we have all these resources, good people. And the answer is actually provided by the National Planning Commission, which, of which Cyril Ramaphosa was one of the key members. It says there that the fundamental challenge facing South African Police Service is a serial crisis of top management. Now, why is top management important? Top management in a hierarchical organization such as the South African Police Service or in most police agencies sets the tone of that organization. All police officials will look up and take their guidance and, and see their seniors, should see their seniors as role models. So the National Commissioner, the Deputy National Commissioners, the Divisional Commissioners, all the Major Generals, Lieutenant Generals and Brigadiers are role models for every other person in that organization. When they adhere to the South African Police Service Code of Conduct, because they tell the truth, they're honest, they know what they're doing, they're confident, they give the entire organization confidence. And more importantly, those men and women at that top echelon are, import, are, re, are required to put in place the correct policies, procedures to ensure that all police officials are properly trained, properly equipped and supported to do a very difficult job in a difficult, complex environment such as South Africa. They must make sure that police officers who are dedicated, work well and hard are promoted, recognized, rewarded and supported on the one hand, 
while on the other hand, those police officers who are involved in corruption, brutality, or disinterested, or involved in crime themselves, are quickly identified and removed. So that responsibility rests with the top echelon of the South African Police Service. Now, what evidence is there that we have had a crisis? Well, I think if you just simply look at the fact that since former National Commissioner Jackie Celebi was convicted for corruption back in 2010, we're now on our sixth person to be appointed to the post of National Commissioner. Most recently, Kekla Sitole was appointed to the position at the end of last year. And already we see in breaking news this morning from Eyewitness News that he was involved in a meeting two days before the African National Conference last year with a person who's apparently under investigation for corruption and has not answered any questions as to why he was meeting this person. The Independent Police Investigative Directorate has stated and alleged that this meeting was to ensure that there was money siphoned off the state security account towards those who wanted to use corruption to support the enemies of Ramaphosa during the African National Conference. These are extremely serious charges and immediately these must be dealt with as a matter of urgency so that if there's nothing to them, uh, General Setole can continue with his work and his reputation reinstated. However, it's not just the National Commissioner that has been a problem. Every time there's been a new National Commissioner, just about, since 2010, we have seen that person making new appointments to key posts across the organization. And too often, these posts or these appointments are not done following a rigorous vetting of the individuals, proper assessments to see that they have the skills and experience necessary for the posts they hold. For example, uh, former National Commissioner Julius Pachlane, who is who's currently appearing in court on corruption charges, while he was the National Commissioner, there were 80 appointments using what is called Regulation 11 of men and women who were appointed to key positions. 55 of these were in the top management echelon of brigadiers, major generals, or lieutenant generals who had not been properly vetted or assessed to see if they could hold the posts that they were appointed to. So, of course, we have large numbers of men and women in these posts who are simply not able to fulfill the requirements, the rigorous requirements of these posts. And this started very soon after, um, well not only started, but continued quite worryingly soon after Jacob Zuma took place, uh, to be appointed president in 2009. The big appointment then that he made two months after he became president was of Lieutenant General Richard M. Dluley. Richard M. Dluley was later suspended after various investigations linked him to serious allegations of kidnapping, uh, intimidation, defeating the ends of justice, and also very importantly to wide-scale corruption involving the Secret Service account, involving hundreds of millions of, uh, of rands. Now, during his tenure as the head of crime intelligence, it has been reported that Richard Dluley made around 250 appointments of people that were close to him, and many of these were not themselves subjected to rigorous assessments and vetting. 26 of these were allegedly members of his close family and friends who had no policing experience, and 15 of these appointments were people of criminal records. So you can see the most vital function of the South African Police Service, the intelligence function, the function that is there to identify the networks committing armed robberies, committing murders, which we've seen grow dramatically over the last uh, five or six years. Murders, there are almost 300, uh, 300 and a half thousand more murders took place last year than was recorded about six years ago. And 40,000 more armed attacks against people in their homes their businesses and on the streets than there was five or six years ago. The intelligence function is necessary to identify these networks of people committing these robberies, causing murders, to direct the vast police resources effectively to making sure that they can be investigated, arrested and brought to the courts and sentenced. That is the role of the police. That role has been deteriorating substantially because of the appointment of Richard Bluley to that key post and the many appointments he made subsequently. And so the first step for the new president to fix this problem is to fix the top echelon of the South African Police Service. He doesn't have to remove all of the top echelon. Uh, there are many good men and women currently serving as lieutenant generals. There are 32 lieutenant generals. There are 215 major generals, and there is uh, about 6,000 brigadiers. And many of them are really highly experienced good men and women. So it's not about replacing all of them, but in order to identify which ones need to be replaced, he needs to adhere to the recommendation of the National Development Plan that there's a competency assessment of each of these men and women. This assessment must go beyond just the competency. It must look at how they're appointed. Were they subject to proper vetting and the processes? How they performed in their jobs over the last two years? Are they able to fulfill the requirements of the posts that they hold? And of course, as importantly, 
their integrity must be tested. This can be in the form of li uh, lifestyle audits and making sure that any allegation against them is thoroughly and quickly investigated by some of our top detectives. Is this can be done in the next year. And those posts where people have been moved because they're not able to fulfill the requirements or because they've been suspended or convicted or dismissed from the police agency, those posts should all be filled using a rigorous merit-based competitive recruitment and, and promotions process so that only the best men and women hold the posts of lieutenant generals, major generals or brigadiers. That new echelon, uh, senior management echelon, will then be able to start the arduous process of making sure that the police perform well, that men and women who are on the ground at police stations get the support that they need, get the resources that they need, and that those men and women who in the police who are not doing their jobs are quickly identified, held accountable, and if necessary, removed. We will then see an improvement in policing in the, in the coming years, which will then dramatically improve public safety, particularly when it comes to armed robberies, car hijackings, and the violent crimes that affect many of us on a daily basis. So if Cyril Ramaphosa wants to ensure that he can add more value to improving the economy, we know that studies in 2008 found that uh, in township areas, small businesses, about 30% of them said that they would not grow or expand their businesses or hire new people because they were scared of becoming targets of criminals in their areas. And that's the kind of crime that the police can get on top of if they are utilized effectively. So in order to support our economy, to make public safety better for everybody, this is what we suggest that Ramaphosa must take on as an urgent task.